Van Van, the parent company of Australia's 13 on-campus Confucius Institutes, has convinced several Australian universities to agree that they must accept the assessment of the Confucius Institute headquarters on the teaching quality at the centres. No CCP on campus! This was apparently not enough for UQ, who have been contractually bound since 2009 to, quote, plan promotional activities to establish and increase the impact of the brand of the Confucius Institute, including media events such as films and television screenings. Shame! Wigan Muslims and Tibetan people here today can tell you about the struggles they face at the hands of the CCP, struggles for a free press, the right to assemble and to worship, and even their right to exist. While the university does nothing but accept CCP money and shake hands with the dignitaries, the Chinese government imprisons hundreds of thousands of Wiggers in Muslim day, oh, in modern day concentration camps. Shame! Shame! Camps that are systematically designed to break down the religious and family unit and erase an ancient culture from the face of the earth. While the university happily accepts our tuition fees, they go missing when push comes to shove and fail to stand up to us, but for us, their students. We will not remain silent. To Peter Hoy and the UQ administration, we demand you explain why your name Juji, the Australian Consul General in Brisbane, an official of, of a government openly hostile to democracy and free speech as a visiting professor of language and culture at Shame! We demand to know why the University of Queensland accepted the most restrictive terminology of any university in its contract with the Confucius Institute. Shame! We demand to know why you promised to promote and increase the impact of the brand of the Confucius Institute. We demand to know why you personally served as a senior consultant to Hanban and how much you were paid for it. Shame! We want to know whether your economic links to China have informed the, uh, the half-hearted and ambiguous response from last week's violence. Shame! Finally, we demand that the re uh, re renegotiation of the contract with Hanban be discontinued and the Confucius Institute not be allowed to operate on campus again. everyone um, how do you guys think we should we should have reacted uh, when we were told by UQ security and staff that we we had to be told where we could have our free speech we were actually told that if we move back to this location where they forced us to congregate that we would be personally responsible for any injuries is that right no So we want to ask UQ, um, we want to hear a statement from them, exactly how our safety and best interests were apart from them, when realistically all they're trying to do is silence our speech by trying to put us in a quiet place on campus, instead of being able to gather here at the side of the Tiananmen Square Park, where realistically it shows exactly where UQ has fallen. Shame! Shame! Back in 1999 when they played this the 10th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre, UQ actually stood for something. They actually condemned. Uh, they, they, can, they condemned the um, human rights violations in China. But where are their comments today on the Uyghur Muslims? Shame! Where are their comments on what's happening in Hong Kong? Shame! And in Tibet as well. Shame! And full of Kong. And full of Kong. Thank Shame! you. So um, we want to hear from UQ as to why now they failed to actually speak out against everything that's happening in China, and while they'll happily accept their money but not actually stand up for what is intrinsically Australian and human right for everyone to gather here, free speech and free assembly. Thank you. Pro Hong Kong, guys. Pro Hong Kong. Pro Hong Kong. Thank you. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land we gathered on the uh, 
Turbo people and the Jagger and Yagara people. Uh, not just as a formality, but as a part of the context of this whole issue here. This uh, university, uh, this gathering, uh, the wealth of uh, so much of this society was built on stolen land. Sovereignty was never and has not been ceded. And we need to keep that in mind when we are critical of uh, what governments elsewhere are doing and the oppression of people on their lands uh, that we have ongoing and unfinished business in regards to stolen land, stolen wages and oppression of the First Nations peoples of the lands we gathered on. We need to be conscious that what the university, this university, which I uh, am a former student at and a graduate of uh, many years ago, uh, is doing is uh, part of a uh, now rampant practice because of the gross underfunding of universities of successive governments, uh, the growing corporatisation and in effect privatisation of universities, um, and the co-opting and loss of independence uh, of what is taught at universities uh, because of the reliance on massive amounts of money, uh, whether it's through from foreign governments like the Chinese governments, the Confucius Institute, uh, whether it's through uh, major corporations and corporate partnership with weapons manufacturers and arms sale industries, uh, all of those compromise uh, not just the independence of the university, but the nature of uh, the entire role uh, of higher education. Uh, so when we point out uh, that the Confucius Institute operates in a way which compromises the independence uh, of the university, and the ability of people to hear full facts uh, about uh, an issue. Uh, it's in a much wider context of uh, that ongoing uh, major underfunding uh, of our higher education sector. Shame! Shame! It's about a, a university, uh, not only just in regards to the Confucius Institute, but into, in regards to, for example, uh, the entire potential loss of uh, what was the students' area and the student union area, and simply looking to turn that into ways to make more money, to provide more independence and free speech and creativity and uh, fighting back and political activism by students across the board. Those spaces are being closed down by the university in all sorts of different ways. I've been uh, in the Senate for many years and uh, speaking for many years in support of people who have suffered uh, major persecution at the hands of uh, an extremely authoritarian, brutal government that controls China. Uh, and again, in a context of other governments that, as we've heard already in regards to uh, the Tibetan people and the deliberate suppression the attempt to eliminate their culture over now more than 50 years. What we're now seeing in regards to the Uyghur people. What we've seen for many years, uh, the brutal treatment of Falun Gong practitioners. And it is consistent with uh, similar actions such as the Indonesian government and what they're doing with the people in West Papua, the Myanmar government and what they're doing with the Rohingya, and as we have to keep reminding ourselves what our own government has done in regards to uh, the indigenous peoples of this land. Uh, we also, uh, I believe, need to recognise and make very clear